You know, sometimes a guy just has a lot of things come up, you know, family, work, other projects, finances. And when that happens, the old race car here, she gets a little bit of dust collected on top of her. That's original dust, probably about seven months ago. So it's been a while, but it's February. The season is pretty well about to start. Already has started some. And uh, I need a body. And I'm not gonna call Rocket and buy one when I can buy the sheet metal myself for roughly $100 a sheet and make my own, save a little money. Plus I'm a thrasher. When I say thrasher, I mean I thrash the wall, run out of talent, tear up all kind of stuff, my guy. Been through two bumpers last season. So I got three spares for thrashing. So we've got a body that can be raced. You know, a little hammer here and there. But I'm thinking, let's go and build a new body. Let's take this season a little more serious. Got some good help joining in with me this year. And you know, this, if I'm ever going to do it this year, is a year for me to do it. So let's build a fresh body. Because to be good, you got to look good. You know, I'm not talking just cut and paste. I'm talking, let's make us a body. Give us a standard set for thrashing. Take a round. Let's do this thing. Okay, so I've got some door panels, some rear quarters that are just old ones, and I've already unbent the top bend. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to trace these. Now, give or take, I'm about to add materi more material for me to hem it, seam it, etc., which I'll take off for all that. For right now, I'm just going to trace what I got, add what I need, cut it, cut all our pieces, and then we'll start breaking these bad boys. See how it comes around. Always start off, before you even go to cutting on a sheet of sheet metal, try to get the most out of your material. When I say that, I mean lay all your sheets out and just try to make it where you can get, you know, a one door and one rear quarter off each sheet. And that way that leaves you a lot of excess material, future fixes, whatnot, whatever. And also, before you go to cutting, take consideration, you're going to want to add an inch on the bottom and an inch on the top and probably a quarter to a half all around all the other edges, the wheel wells and the, uh, little upright sides or whatever. That way you can hem it, gives you a little bit more structure. Just always take consideration that before you cut it, then you know, you cut it too small, you're gonna have sharp edges, cut a tire down. So always just take your time, do it right the first time. All right, now that we got our doors and our rear quarters cut, and I've already got a stencil on them, where I'm about to make on my brake set, we're gonna go ahead and do all our seams and hem this thing. And after doing that, we'll go up to the top and break our elbow where it rests on top of the deck. So, I know I've got this big, luxurious looking sheet metal break here, but it's honestly kind of a pain in the butt. It'd be really nice just to have a good old fashioned hand break. This thing's ran off the air. It's probably about 50 years old, but either way, it gets the job done. So, no complaints. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start off by breaking more or less our structural breaks. We're going to go and seam both sides, top and bottom. It's always best to go and do this. Well, you pretty much got to do this before you break your upright right bend. See, I'm using an air brake. If you had a regular old brake, this would be a lot easier process. You know, you could make your brake and then slide it back a little bit. Just press down on the brake again, and that would give it a nice, flat, smooth finish. Where my process, I'm going to have to go back with a rubber hammer and beat these seams down and then come back and make my breaks again. No big deal, just a little bit longer process. <clears throat> Probably wonder why I'm sitting on the ground and that reason is because uh, 30 by 40 shop, I just don't see much room for a wooden body table to be taking up space. So that means said I got a nice rubber floor mat, like a dog crate or something on the ground here. And it's gonna be perfect surface to bend the rest of these seams over and just go and bend, hammer those down with the rubber hammer. Now from a wheel well, got a very special tool. This isn't something you get from race car engineering, people. This is as unique and homemade as it gets. When you see this wheel well, you don't want to leave a nice sharp edge. Here, let me get this down where you can actually see what we're dealing with here. Okay. You don't want to leave a nice sharp edge right here to cut your tire down, 
etc. And plus it just, why well, take this much time to do this and not just go and hem that. So what I got here is just a piece of quarter inch by two, which it ain't gonna be that wide. And I've taken a porter band and I cut me a little slot in there and I sanded it down so this will just slip right over the sheet metal, you know, however, depth, however deep you want it and you can just bend up. You can do this with a piece of wood or you can just use a crescent wrench and just do every quarter inch, which I did for a long time. I've seen somebody else do this and I said to do it. So we're gonna stick this, bend this all the way up, beat everything down flat and then we'll make our break up top. Once again, this is one of those things, if you have the tools, obviously some jobs are just easier. Or if you had a bead roller, you could roll a little bead on this, like an elbow, and then just come back and hammer it down instead of having to use that little tool. But I guess my purpose here is to show there's really no reason to have an excuse why you can't get something done. They've done it for years, the old-fashioned way. Use what you got, get it done. You know, that way it saves you money. It puts money in your pocket, puts money in your racing fund other projects so it's a win-win plus just having pride in your stuff it just shows everybody that you can do it get it done okay we got both doors and rear quarters we got them hemmed now we're about to do our top break which with this particular break let me see it's just a little straight elbow and i don't want to have a sharp edge i want to have a nice radius and you see i'm at to do a bunch of little bends you can see I got four marks there to kind of give me a little bit of a radius rather than just a sharp pointy curve y'all see on my seam here I always like to give myself about an inch seam top and bottom bottom that way you have your angle piece that your skirt goes on it's just got an extra layer of sheet metal on top as well your rivets will go through it just gives you a little extra layer and all around seam like this is going to make the whole panel just that much stronger the more breaks the stronger it's going to be so let's go and break her upright and then we'll carry on from there i tell you this right here is a very time consuming and aggravating process if you do have a regular old handbrake to do this process all you got to do is pick out what size you know what size radius do you want you know you want a one inch radius get yourself a piece of one inch tubing you know either get fancy with it weld you some tabs on it put you some you know drilling taps some holes and break where that thing can bolt on there just weld it on there and that way when you make that break it just gives it a nice curve instead of that sharp point. You know, let's leave that stuff back in the 90s. You know, let's that nice big radius on it. Okay, got the top of our doors and rear quarters broke. I went ahead and built us a new filler piece for the nose cone. Got that ready to go. And I went in and also, I've had these built for a few months, the front quarters. You see how I ended up getting that nice... Just smooth radius right there. Not a sharp bend, just smooth radius. And the tool I built for this is actually a quarter scale Jeep here. I built it just for this right here. And I added the, the door beat and roll bar here. And once you kind of do your brakes in the brake, I just set it on that tube and I'll take a roll rubber mallet and I beat the mess out of it till I get the shape I want. Long process, but job gets done. So let's get that out of our way. Got to build a new T-bar. Ran out of talent. Completely scuttled the left front here. I mean, it's gone. Absolutely. Ruined the T-bar. So I've got everything cut up for that. We're going to get that cut. We'll get our hood filler piece on here, or nose filler, whatever you prefer to call it. And then we'll get our mock-up hood on, and that'll make allow us to measure for the top of our rear quarters, that sheet metal. Yes, you know, you could buy these T-bars fairly cheap. I don't know how much they are, but I'm just assuming they are not very expensive. But a three-quarter stick of square tubing is pretty flipping cheap. And you can make multiple T-bars out of it. And, you know, you can kind of choose the bend that you want on the right front fender or just copy your factory one. Save yourself some money, get, you know, learn something new. Or if you already know how to weld and do a little fabricating, why not just go ahead and do it? Like it once again goes back to the pot. Put my hood filler piece on, a nose filler. Honestly, I just uh, took the piece that was on there on the hood that I'd uh, I'd actually purchased that nose for a couple hundred bucks with the bumper, believe it or not. And uh, more or less just made a stencil of it, made a new piece that we have a fresh piece of sheet metal on there to match the rest of our fresh body, other than our old scratched up deck, which 
if you know, lucky, maybe we'll get to that next year. Who knows? Let's see. Your old body is coming along quite nicely, especially given the circumstances here. You've seen me on the ground beating and banging, a 1960-something air brake, you know, this thing's coming around pretty nice. I've already got a thing bolted up here. I'm not going to peel this off until the very end because that would just ruin everything. You want to see it done, then rip this crap off and take a good gander at her. We're going to go and unbolt both our doors and our rear quarters. I've already got them placed, so we go to put them back on, just zip, 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 bolt them back on. And uh, I've got my skirt already marked. We're going to go and put our uh, hanging down skirt on here. You know, and, and we'll come back with something and clean the tire rubs off of it. But I got all the mud off of it. We're going to go mount the skirt and put, let's get our skirt on. Got some other things on the way. Yes, I'm going to put new body bolts on it, new washers. Calm down. Okay, just calm down. We've got all that on the way. We're going to get there. We haven't even got the visqueen off this thing yet, or whatever you want to call this aggravating crap here. It's on the way. Let's get this thing done. Now, if I hadn't copied a set of doors that were already on my car that I built last year, I would have had to let this body still hang onto the deck, you know, clamp up my pieces, get it the way I wanted it to be. Do it, cut it, trim it. A little bit longer process, but fortunately, it's already just cut and paste. So I know where it needed to be at. I already had it marked, put it on there, got it done. And that's also when it comes in handy without one inch seam to get on the bottom. Because so now, not only are you just relying on one piece of, you know, layer of sheet metal, you got two layers to help hold that piece of plastic on there. Then obviously, putting a support piece of angle in there, you, you know, you can buy these, but you know, I just get a trap supply, buy like a Thinking about them like eight foot sections are fairly cheap. Cut it yourself, drill the holes wherever you need them for your hangers, and you know you're pretty well good to go. Now when it comes. This is my from my front quarters the piece that's you know on the from the that's going to go partly underneath the hood up to the right side and left side of the body. What I got here is just a I think it's actually just called like a ductwork sheet metal shrinker. Klein makes it. You can get them off Amazon eBay is pretty cheap tool and it just you just kind of mark wherever you want to start your bend at and then just clamp them down just keep going going till you get the shape that you want and then put a little support piece in there as well well I'll tell you we're not going to be needing that anymore because we spent a little money here bought us a brand new white spoiler along with a new white hood cow there because this thing right here is looking lean mean and clean take a good picture people it's a matter of time. First race in, I can just about guarantee that's going to be tore up. But we will build another one. So anywho, let's get these pieces installed. I've already got the piano hinge on the spoiler. Built a new T-bar. Hood's obviously built. I've got a bolt top of the carburetor there. All I'm doing there is just so I can mark my center. Once I mark the center, we'll place the top of our filter cover thing. Put that booger right on there. Make a little stencil. Do a little cutage on that. So anyways, tired of hearing me talk. Let's get back to the show. Let's get this blue stuff off. Let's get this thing done.
followed this whole video, surely do appreciate you. Go and hit that subscribe button, maybe even like the video. Drop a comment if you've seen I, something I could have done a little bit differently, been a little more time effective, or even made it look a little better. Thanks again for watching. On to the next one.